Go with that on tape. Right. <laughs> you want to give any names away, Mick? Uh, no, that might tend to eliminate my existence. <laughs> Get me back in big trouble again. Mick, you uh, were doing whale watching before you uh, connected with uh, Shark Diving International, right? That's correct. The, uh, the orcas that we see at the Fairlands are uh, a transient pod. Um, I haven't seen anything at the, at the islands for uh, numerous years. Uh, the last time I actually seen a orca was uh, last year, uh, at the beginning of our season, um, several miles from the island. Uh, Mick has a great story of, uh, of the orcas actually hunting at the island and consuming a white shark. Uh, October, I think it was the 4th. I think it was October 4th of 97. It might have been 96, I believe it was 97 that we had the, the good one. And uh, I guess uh, you can just let it roll and see here. I how much detail do you want? You know, I could go on. It's, okay. This so, could be a kind of long story, or the one in, the one in detail was in '97. Correct. Okay. And so was that the one with the? This the, was the, the one with the two the orcas, smaller? the one larger orca and smaller orca. Okay. Uh, and we saw the whole thing got a call from uh, one of the other charter boats uh, that was at the main island and he said hey Mick the, the two orcas are here and he told me where they were just above Sugarloaf uh, and then while he was telling me where they were he got real excited and uh, described a, a feeding event the orcas killed and ate a uh, California sea lion uh, tore it apart in front of him and uh, so you know he's getting real excited on the radio telling me about this and I'm wishing I was several miles ahead of where I was um, about a half an hour after that, uh, we pulled up to Sugarloaf. Uh, Jay, the other party boat operator, was gone by then. He was off fishing. Uh, but we pulled up to Sugarloaf, and sure enough, the orcas were there. And uh, so we, we stopped and uh, did a drift. The orcas came over to the boat. And uh, the orcas often act, you know, kind of like a large dolphin. Uh, they're, they're curious. Uh, and they were just messing around the boat, swimming back and forth and around. Um, and then, uh, then my deckhand, Laura, uh, pointed off across the water and said, Mick, there's a white shark. I kind of laughed at her, thinking she was just pulling my leg, but looked over and sure enough, there was a white shark that came up on what was left of this carcass that the, uh, that the orcas had killed. And right about that time, the larger of the two orcas made a beeline that direction. And then there was nothing, and then there was a splash over in that area. And then there was nothing, and a couple of minutes later, uh, the orca came up to the boat, right up next to the boat with this now dead white shark in its mouth, holding it up. And uh, it was holding it up, you know, I like to say like a, like a cat with a mouse, you know, bragging, showing you what it could do. Look what I got for you kind of thing. It held it up and then it dropped it and the orcas went back to swimming around. The shark carcass sunk. The, or uh, the orca would go back down, pick up the shark carcass, brought it up, showed it to us again. And this is all right next to the boat, you know, as I recall, eight to ten feet away, perhaps even a little closer. Uh, and, and it did that for maybe 20 minutes. And then uh, during this time, I was trying repeatedly trying to get a hold of Peter Pyle. He was doing a, uh, a landing, uh, unloading people and supplies from one of the patrol boats to the island. So he was just on the other side of the island. And I'm trying to describe this incredible event, but I can't get to him. Scott was on his way out to the island, uh, but he was on a boat that was uh, experiencing fuel problems. He'd go a mile or two and the motor would stall, and he'd go a mile or two and it'd stall. Well, uh, so I'm excited trying to find somebody to tell about or to tell this, this story to. And uh, finally, the same uh, charter boat operator, Jay, on the Huck Finn, uh, went over to the island on his boat and got a hold of Peter on the loudspeaker. He told him, hey, Pete, Nick's on 80 trying to get a hold of you. And, go up. and Peter came up on the radio and said, what's going on, Mick? I'm real busy. And I said, well, there's a, a shark and an orca thing, and the shark's now dead. And uh, he says, I'll be right there. And uh, so he came zooming around the corner, uh, but by this time, uh, the show, you know, the, the the bragging part of the show was pretty much over, and uh, the the two orcas, well, the one orca took the shark carcass off, and the two of them kind of tore it apart, and then uh, there's some underwater video of that that uh, where the Peter got, he had the underwater camera, and he's got the the video showing the uh, the orcas tearing the shark apart and eating the liver. Uh, 
and about the time that was over with, Scott finally made it in. Not a single person on the boat filmed the showing? The no, actually, uh, the, the video that was available that uh, made it around on, on, the, uh, on the news crews and things, and I think that there, part of it might have made it even to YouTube, we had a passenger on the boat that was shooting it with, uh, with a video camera. Um, and then uh, a woman on the boat, a representative of the media, a public relations representative of Oceanic Society, happened to be on the boat that day. And she was able to con the, the passenger out of, uh, out of his tape so that she could use it for uh, promoting the trips. And uh, so that's where the, the above water video came from, was off the boat of just a passenger with a video camera. I have not seen it. Have you seen it? Uh, I've seen it. Oh yeah, it made it around the world on the news. Uh, it took a little bit of time for her to convince the news people that she had something that was really good. And then uh, all of a sudden everybody jumped on the bandwagon. First time it had ever been seen kind of thing. And uh, you know, it's just one of those things that those concerned realized this is a major event, but other people thought, you know, whatever, sharks, you know, la la la, orcas, la la la. But this is uh, on the scale of, you know, a biologist sitting around a campfire with other biologists saying, well, if you had a grizzly bear and a, and a mountain lion in a fight, who would win? Well, it's not gonna happen. They target other stuff, you know, for them to get together when there's other food around that either of them could take, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. The two animals aren't gonna risk the damage. Well, it's kind of that way with the orcas and the white sharks. Um, why would an orca go after a white shark when there's plenty of other food around that doesn't have the, you know, the damage risk associated with it? So the whole thing was, uh, it was wild on several different levels. Did, I mean, the detail of the attack when the shark got killed, did you see that? No. No, that happened uh, underwater. We just saw a splash. We saw a big splash and then nothing. We didn't know what was happening. We didn't see any of it, It was, but it was very quick. And then the, the shark was killed and brought back to the boat, you know, almost immediately. And how, how high did this orca lift the shark out of the water? Oh, uh, I mean, you know, they just lifted its mouth. So uh, perhaps two feet, 18 inches, something like that. And the shark was still intact. The shark was, uh, yeah, basically intact. The part that we could see was all intact. You know, we couldn't see the tail, but uh, it was, as I recall, holding it kind of like uh, just behind the head. And uh, yeah, it appeared to be intact. And so the means of death, it had Hard to say. its back or? Hard to say, orca interaction. <laughs> yeah. so, so I mean are you able to from what was seen of the shark are you able to estimate the size um it was a smaller shark uh as I recall 12 foot ish 12 13 foot something like that and the orca you know that was the larger orca perhaps full grown what is um, that? at the time there was some speculation that uh that the smaller orca was a calf but um when the orca uh photos were submitted to the orca people, uh, they determined that no, in fact, this was not a calf. Uh, it was a well, the, both orcas were well known. They were out of an LA pod, uh, LA transients that happened to be up here. I, uh, the only thing I've ever found was the documentary someone pieced together with Peter's underwater footage and claims that, uh, you know, they called it A5 or whatever of the LA pod. Right. And a known shark killer. Did they just enhance that? I don't that... remember anything about a known shark killer. Uh, no, I, I didn't hear any of that. And as far as I know, well, it, it, perhaps it ate some smaller sharks down south. One thing that's fairly interesting about this whole thing was that the transient orcas are generally thought to be uh, marine mammal eaters. And the local pods are the fish eaters. So like your animals up in, uh, in Seattle, for instance, are your fish eaters, they eat salmon uh, primarily. Whereas the transients are the ones that prey on seals and sea lions. Um, one interesting thing about this interaction was you had transients and first they did in fact eat a sea lion, uh, but then they went and ate a big fish. So, you know, they're kind of breaking all the rules. Um, and why did they really go for that fish? Who knows? Was it, uh, was it something about the orca coming up to, to that carcass that was, was theirs and they were mean, protecting their carcass? The yeah, I'm sorry. Say that part again. One thing that, you know, we're, we're trying to, or we were trying to figure out what was really going on. Why did the orca go after this white shark? Uh, did it want the shark as food or was it was it protecting its carcass? The orca had killed this sea lion and the carcass was there. The shark came up to the carcass and then the orca went over and got it. 
So uh, was it perhaps just protecting its food? You know, the, 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 the animal that it had killed and eaten it might have wanted more. You know, it's, it's really hard to say why the whole thing happened. It's uh, and major said, questions. You said it showed off for 20 minutes? Uh, it seemed like it, yeah, close to 20 minutes. It took a while for me to get a hold of Peter and him to get around and all that. And So yeah. how many drops and brain? I don't remember. Uh, all I could say would be several. You know, three, five, six maybe. I don't think it was any more than that. Probably three or four. And uh, adult orca, uh, humor me, what is that, 25 feet? I think it's uh, in that realm, yeah, 21 to 25 perhaps, somewhere in there. And then... Amazingly enough, you saw this uh, freak occurrence of nature again two years later? Well, we saw parts of it that, yeah, there was a, a larger pot of orcas. I don't remember the number. Um, it was on the other side of the island. We were over off of, uh, oh, I think kind of off of West End. And uh, another event occurred. There was a bunch of orcas, perhaps 12 or 15 orcas, I, as I recall, maybe a couple more. Uh, in that area and then all of a sudden the birds went up there was obviously a feeding event going on and we went over there uh, Peter was also ended up over there and uh, he got a couple of scraps of flesh and um, and had the DNA worked up on them and found out that as we thought it was the case it, it was another white shark uh, that was uh, attacked and eaten this time by a, a group of orcas uh, instead of just a couple uh, but we didn't, you know, we didn't see the whole thing on that one. It was just, uh, it was uh, an event that uh, we were able to piece together uh, afterwards uh, what the probable, you know, I mean, did anyone who the players it? were. No, no, it's, uh, it's one of those things where the birds were the first ones on it. And one of the things we look at to tell us what's happening in the ocean are birds. Birds are always telling stories, you know, whether we're fishing or whether we're looking for whales or whether we're looking for you know, albacore or whether we're looking for shark attacks. Um, in that case, everybody was watching for shark attacks. We saw the birds come up and uh, raced over to see what was going on. And uh, it, it, uh, it wasn't the classic shark attack on a pinniped. It was something different and the orcas were involved, um, but it didn't appear that a marine mammal was involved. And then, uh, you know, we saw the chunks of flesh and it turns out it was, uh, you know, it was a fish and it was a white shark.